of you know um, what's on the device itself, but what we can do is we can stop the digital you know um, function from really escaping the device. We also can improve the email side as well. So in terms of you know normal exchange integration, you know you usually join to the domain, you're on internal network, you're able to get your internal mail. There's a lot more control that you can have around that. Mobile devices, you know, bringing up EAS and being able to um, you know, have your emails loaded on the mobile device. What happens if your mobile device is stolen? Um, you know, what happens if you've got sensitive documents through your email? What happens if you've really got uh, you know, emails that could really put your business at risk or if they lead to a competitor, you know, seriously damage the business. So we offer protection in that space and we also protect the users with browsing. So being able to you know, restrict websites that people can visit, but also enable them to visit internet sites from their mobile device securely um, when they're not within you know, the actual internal network, we can offer that. So we do a lot of enterprise integration, enterprise grade security around mobile devices. Um, we've been very fortunate in the fact that we've been, um, for quite some time, um, I guess the lead in the space, which is probably why VMware were quite interested in us. So it's fantastic. So that's just a little bit about iWatch, um, a little bit about what we do every day. Um, both basically bringing your desktop or your laptop to mobile devices, trying to offer that same sort of little security. So I wanted to come here today and really speak on the content management side of things. Um, I wanted to bring in some business challenges just to talk to you guys about in terms of you know um, internal content, content that's going around by our email, um, content in the clouds is something that businesses are quite worried about at the moment. How do we how do we protect our users? How do we protect ourselves? So you know a couple of these business cases is that users really do in this day and age they need documents on the train. They need to be able to do their emails before they you know take off on a plane and flip a couple of the documents of you know gone ahead and edited annotated back to the executive assistant, all those sorts of things. Um, you have a four of, you know, almost, I would call it, slightly secure products within, you know, different app stores, you know, Windows RT, iOS, Android. Um, they offer cloud services, um, but not too much in terms of data protection. Um, you know, example of that would be the Dropbox service, which I guess a lot of you guys have heard about. So, you know, you'd have employees that brought these iPads into work in kind of like a BYD situation or just uh, under the nose of IT and, uh, and start using Dropbox and all that, and that's really storing information elsewhere in the world. They don't really, you know, the organization doesn't really have too much control over where the start is going, how it's handled, and that's quite scary. Um, but, you know, it does enable the users, so, you know, having these products, the user does really need this while he's on the run. Um, so, you know, Airwatch, we can kind of, um, I wouldn't say control, I'd say more be able to help the user but also manage um, security um, and that protecting the user with data um, and content. Um, the other thing that was is quite recently new into our products was the collaboration side. So about a year ago we started developing the collaboration side of things. Um, we had like a secure container for content and such, but we, we also realized you know, the challenge of people that need to access other people's documents um, you know, and sharing across um, documents within cloud storage um, to each other. So being able to share files, but also being able to share them securely while they're out and run, when they're not necessarily you know, in the organization, they might not necessarily have access to SharePoint, they might not be able to check in and check out documents. So there's a lot of other business challenges in, in terms of the whole content side of mobility that quite sweet, but it can really actually scare some businesses. So entering in your watch to your content locker. Um, this is a product that we've developed to help protect sensitive documents within a corporate container. Um, so you know, still allowing these BYD devices to come in, but protecting them within like an encrypted segment. So that's the secure document distribution side of things. Um, being able to control where um, these documents are actually going, which apps they're going into. Um, this is something that AirWatch can help organizations with. So you can also ensure that employees have the latest materials. So there's a lot of situations where employees um, might get an older version of the document that they've taken off you know, on the road, they might take a USB with them, might have board meeting you know, notes on it, might have um, some form 
of content or other, maybe sales material, for example, as well. Um, and if that's not up to date, and that's sharing that around, and there's important things that need to change, we can really, with our solution, we can make sure that the actual sync happens even when they're on the road and they have 3G, 4G. We can really update that material, bring it to the latest copy that way. We know that employees are handing out the latest and greatest. Um, we also provide anytime, anywhere access to critical content. So I'm, I'm actually going to go into a, uh, an example to do with one of the major black companies that we've got um, using our product at the moment. Um, when they're flying across Australia, um, their pilots absolutely need to have the manuals on board before they can even fly off. They need to have these documents, which are literally about that thick. You know, A4 documents, this is a huge bundle that used to carry and it used to fit into a giant suitcase with content um, locker. We're able to deliver all that content in, keep it up to date. They'll download it just before their uh, flight, store it in there while they're flying around, and they'll have access to that flight manual in the cockpit. So that's, that's quite fantastic, um, I feel. Um, we also support, in terms of the platform support, I guess, um, we support iPhone, iPad, Android. Uh, we recently brought one of those RTs to play. We have um, sync utilities, uh, just like our competitors, where um, we can actually drop documents into, you know, um, from your Macintosh, from your Windows laptop, into your personal content folder and have that sync across your devices as well. So not just the mobile space, but you can have those documents synced anywhere that you need to have access to that content, or be a desktop or whatever. Um, in terms of the deployment options, um, we have so many different unique cases um, with, you know, that, that companies bring us. Um, so we really need to be flexible in our approach to delivery when it comes to secure content lockup. Um, some companies need that device security, so they'll, they'll install content locker as part of their device management solution um, for MDM. Um, so that way they have control of the device, you know, if the device goes missing, with the MDM, they can actually send out commands to perhaps enterprise wipe all the corporate content off that device. They can do a full device wipe as well um, to delete everything off the device as well. Uh, we also integrate with a product um, that we made called Workspace. This is more for, I guess, um, the BYD kinds of users where they might have um, personal photos, they might have you know, their personal um, files, so they might have their own personal documents on the device, and rather than having an MDM embedded deep down in the device to give that enterprise level of control, it's like, a, it's like an app connect, kind of a light layer of applications that all talk to each other um, on the device and uh, install that corporate content so we can just take that off as well. Um, and MDM can do that as well, it's more like a lightweight version really. And we also offer a standalone SCL, so there's business cases that we've had where you might have users that you know, it might not be a BYD thing, it might not be like they're actually an employee of your company, but you still need to securely distribute the documents, perhaps the contractors doing specific works in your business, and you still need to have all those documents. You still need those encrypted, you need those under control, you don't want them leaking out to email, you know, being able to print them out and stuff like that. So we can help in that regard as well. In terms of the repository types that we support, we support a lot of cloud. This isn't a full list, by the way. Um, the list is a lot more extensive than this. So, you know, we have the AirWatch Cloud, which can be off of our uh, outposting solution or your on premise solution if you go with AirWatch. Um, we also support Office 365, SkyDrive, Google Drive, Amazon S3. Um, hybrid Clouds, we support those sorts of setups as well. And on premise, even if you're in the cloud, so even if you're using our cloud solution um, for device management, we can still tap into SharePoint securely and network file shares with that, which I'll talk about later. And just a side note, if anyone wants to jump in anytime, ask any questions, feel free to. I'll take questions at the end after we've been a bit demo, but um, feel free to raise anything that you want. In terms of the enterprise and user content enablement, um, in terms of the, the enterprise stuff that we can do, we can, we can do those integrations with the SharePoint, your CMIS, um, you know, network file shares and such. We can upload documents directly into the cloud into your specific um, environment that you might have with us or, or post it on your, your own site. We can also sync across platforms, so you know, being able to move between you know, SkyDrive, AirWatch, SharePoint, we can, we can sync across all these different platforms, pull down the content, move them around, it's fantastic. 
we can also configure the storage limits for these instead of using like a cloud solution. Um, you might want to know that users be able to upload, you know, um, hundreds of days of documents into the cloud folder. We can have limitations on that as well. In terms of the, the users, they get, they get to store files in the dedicated folder. They can sync across, you know, content across all the devices. Not just mobile devices, but you know, really anything. Um, and I'll show you on that later. They can capture photos and videos, and that's securely within the app as well. So it's not going to store it in the local, you know, photos app or, or whatever uh, you're using, depending on the platform. Um, and they can collaborate between each other. Um, content share out links securely. Um, have that sorted down, they have quite a lot of control over that, which I'll go into now. So these aren't screenshots of the product. Um, I'll show you in the section a little bit later. Um, these are just a uh, full PowerPoint. <coughs> um, you can share a file link and you can password protect that. You can limit the days available for a file. So if you need to share something to somebody, you can just grab that file link and say, okay, that file's going to be available for two days. We're going to send it externally if I want. You can also limit the amount of downloads. That way you kind of know um, that hasn't been downloaded and else we've got track with that. You can see the current downloads too. Um, in terms of you know, folder sharing as well, so if you're in collaborative space and so we use this in the office um, quite a lot for all of our content repositories. Um, so for our SharePoint, you can um, you can create a folder as a user and then you can choose all the other users um, with your organization if you want to be able to see that folder and collaborate with. They can accept that there and the folder will appear when you go into SCL. Or secure content like that. You can also have roles in that as well. So we're very granular in what we do. So you can have like co and documents, editors, um, readers, um, there's more trails on this as well. You can get email notifications as well uh, when a document's been updated that way you know they come back into SCL. Uh, so this is one of the recent things that we brought into it, the editing and annotation. So being able to uh, edit documents, um, and I'll actually show you these tools um, in the demo. It, it's quite fantastic in terms of what you can do. You can open up an Excel document, you can do sums, averages, all of that. You can go ahead and you know, edit Word documents, leave notes on PDFs. Um, you can also integrate with other applications. So in the demo, I'm going to show you that I can actually bring files into Word. I can also bring them back into SCL to protect them and group them again. So that's quite fantastic. In terms of, I guess, file types that we support in the product, um, pretty much the majority of the, the important Microsoft Office apps are Visio and, uh, and as such. Um, we support Bioworks, we have um, support for PNGs, JPEGs. We can play videos in the container as well, so .movie, MP4, you know, MP3s in terms of audio, um, PDFs, XML, HTML, RTF, EPUB. Um, and this, this list is growing, so this list that I've got here is a couple months old. There's actually more to this as we as we spend in our content locker to different platforms. Now on the security side, with the AirWatch, we can actually do AZ integration to backends and as part of the integration element, enterprise integration element. So we can do that enterprise grade security where you can you can use your AZ credentials in. Um, these aren't stored locally on the device or anything like that. They're not stored in the AirWatch. Um, we have a tool called Cloud Connect, which basically you can, uh, when, when you are logged into SCL, you'll type in your AD credentials, it'll then query back to Cloud Connector and, uh, and say, and Cloud Connect will send off a request to LDAP or AD or whatever, saying, yep, is, that a, is this a valid username and password encrypted through the crowd? Yep, cool. Okay, let's let the user in. So we have a Cloud Connect for um, business to integrate with. Um, documents on our wooden um, SCL level 256 that encrypted. No documents um, coming into SCL um, through any of the corporate sites or anything like that. It's really through SSL um, and, and same goes to the Watch Cloud as well. Um, we can disable access to documents if your device is going to jailbreak. So if you think of the users going to get jailbreak in their device, we can just say no. Nah. We have um, auditing on these devices um, or what we call compliance. Um, and if the devices don't meet that standard or there's a problem with that user or anything like that, um, we can actually stop them from being able to get this content up quite quickly. Um, we can also restrict sharing documents by our email. We can stop the editing of documents if we want. So certain, and this is like a per document thing or a per repository thing. So we can actually you know, say, 
Okay, this, this is the puzzle trick here um, that I'm giving you, or the solver here that I'm giving you. We don't want you to be able to print anything from here. We don't want you to be able to copy anything into the other apps or anything like that. Um, we just want that content kind of like you want to we can we can enable that. Um, you know, we have we have the ability to stop people from being able to take screenshots and advice some content to. Um, so we, and it's really up to you what you want to do with this. So if you have those sorts of important documents, you can, and you can have that high level of security brought in. If you've got documents that are okay to go around um, to make sure you use your organization, you're fine for them to print and edit. You can also have those set up the documents and also. Um, another cool thing that we do have is geofencing. So, you know, all these little devices that I've got, you know, the iPhones, the iPads, the, the Android devices, um, they all have GPS built into them. And what we can do is we can make content available based on where the user is. So if they're in the business, you can say these documents are allowed to be downloaded here, or downloaded here. Um, when they walk out of the actual premise and they go back into the SDL and their GPS position has been updated or perhaps have gone offline, that document will then by itself and get rid of it. So that's quite a fantastic feature that we do have, as well as um, I don't think it knows, but um, the ability to stop documents from being viewed at certain times. So I think if you're in the government and you've got a nice five job, it might be odd in some circumstances that you download content after hours. You can actually certain documents, certain repositories, you can stop users from being able to access those at certain hours. So that's cool too. And that's even when they play with the time on the devices, it's going to be quite, you know, quite tricky around the whole thing. Um, in terms of the content integration on the back end, so you know you might be in the in the cloud with your watch, you might be using an on-prem solution. Um, how do you actually get these documents securely down to SharePoint? I guess that some of you guys might be asking for your internal you know, network file shares. We have a product called Mobile Access Gateway. Mobile Access Gateway beacons back up to the AirWash environment just to find out the status of the devices. It's, it's really a gateway that checks what's happening on the device, what's happening here, what is this user allowed in. Um, and the connection to the mobile access gateway is all through SSL. Um, once that user's passed a series of tests, both from console and the device, and is being able to access content, it can then hand back that, uh, that it, can, it can essentially go, um, trying to get my words right here with my dry throat, it will allow access to those repositories. And you know, for, for more secure organizations as well, we can have this in like a, a relay endpoint mode. So you might have a mobile access gateway that's in your team's in, and that will pass um, the traffic through to your mobile access gateway that's in your internal network, and then be able to access your point. That way you're not punching too many holes through the firewall. Um, in terms of personal content for users, um, this all backs up to, I guess, the cloud or your on-premise um, AirWash and can be stored you know, locally within a file share or can be stored within a database also. Depends on what you want to do there if you're on-premise. Um, we have flexible folder creation and administration so users can quickly go ahead and create a folder on their device so they'll be able to see that back on their laptop. You know, that will appear on their laptop and everything as well. Um, we can define the storage limits for certain users as well to make sure that I'm going to go over the data plan and we can send the alerts when getting close to it. Um, we also have integration back into the self service portal, so there might be situations where they are on a device or something like that and they might not have the same utility, they might not have content locker, they can actually log in to the self service portal if you have this enabled for your environment and they'll be able to pull that off a little bit. So I'll show you that a bit later. And of course, that desktop sync that we've been talking about. I just wanted to quickly show you guys a screenshot of the desktop scene. So it just looks like a regular folder um, within your, you know, within your computer. Um, you can do pretty much anything on with this. So you know, adding, removing, modifying content, having it uploaded to your personal cloud storage. Uh, it's a two-way thing as well. So whatever you do on the device is going to affect your personal content folder on your PC too. Uh, another big thing that we we like to do is custom branding across all our applications. So, you know, businesses might buy AirWash and, and um, they might want their logo on it, they might want their service to have, you know, access to the console, look like their own, look and feel like their own. So having their, their name, their, their branding, um, their company logo, sorry, being able to alter the CSS, you know, to say, um, 
okay, the default host is going to be a county host here. Um, use it across the board. They can do that in self-service portals as well. They can do it in content portal, all of our apps. If they're going to uh, go ahead and create their internal apps as well with the ICK or with app wrapping, they can, um, they can run this too. So we have that functionality there to, to bring it across the board. Now, just before I start the demo, does anyone have any questions so far? I hope, does it all make sense? Um, yeah? So you said about geofencing earlier, there's some iPads don't have GPS built in. So, uh, would it just work by picking up the Wi Fi? Yes, yeah, so it work off the Wi Fi GPS. This is a device that's recorded a GPS um, location, it will work. I know some Android devices um, handle GPS differently between Wi Fi and 3G, in those circumstances, it might not. And these are like basic 2.2 Android devices. They might not be able to access the contents at all. Thank you. That's good. Any other questions prior yet? Yeah. There's a question about the file support. Yeah. What does it mean to support the file support? Yeah. Is it just like what does it do with the file? Uh, so basically being able to view it and edit. So say there might be open office files, um, file types that we might not support. So if you've got like a, a pure Linux system, um, that all your desktop users are using, you might not be able to store those uh, those open office files. They'll be they'll be encrypted and they'll be visible within Content Locker, but you can't actually you know view them themselves. The more just sitting there. So uh, as we worked on integrations with Bitcoin, so I believe I might be wrong. I need to check, but I believe we do support open office library office and stuff now. So this list is very growing. But, uh, but originally it was a, it was a big thing for different customers to be able to support their office and this and that file type format type. Because uh, every device kind of uses their own unique format types so, yeah. there. Okay, excellent. Any more questions or should I start on the, the one stuff? No? Excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that screen down. I have my iPad with me. I have this cool little tool called Reflector which will allow me to share my screen on my iPad with my laptop. It's going to be two seconds while I get this up and running. It drops out when uh, my iPad goes to sleep. That's a bit on the screen. That's okay, let me just flip over to you guys. And I'll try and make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So there's my iPad. So this is what it equals, as you can see. Uh, this device has been enrolled in the Watch so I have a couple of the Watch apps here. Um, I do have Word. Um, I'm just going to quickly go into the app catalog as well and show you. So the app catalog is kind of our, our spot which we would store uh, content on. So I'll wait for that load, it shouldn't take too long. But you'll be able to see internal apps, you know, public apps or apps that I'm pushing out as an admin. Um, you'll be able to see that I've actually gone ahead and I've grabbed uh, what Microsoft Word. I've pulled that down. Um, in the background, I'll just let that load at the same time. I've got a WD reader, but I've kind of downloaded that on my own board in the app store. So it's not going to be part of my you know, my enterprise profile on the bus. Here we go. Uh, so, oh, I do have Adobe Reader here now. This changes daily. Uh, so I have downloaded Adobe Reader, but it won't be under management because I've gone directly to the App Store and then for a catalog will be pushed out by an administrator. So I have downloaded uh, Microsoft Web. You can note that it says reinstall this. So I've noticed that I have downloaded it through mobile device management. Um, I'm going to go back and close this off now. Just want to show you the apps I'm dealing with and the kind of security options that we have. So I'm going to open up SCL now. And it's just doing a single sign on handshake. I'm already authenticated through with our uh, demo ID that I have. So I should already have that token. And my iPad is a little faster than the laptop, not the screen. Okay, so this is Secure Content Locker. You can notice on the left hand side that we have you know, our corporate network file shares. You can see SharePoints in there as well, uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, Office 365. 
This is just some of the repositories that we integrate with. You can see that I have my own personal user content here. So I've got my own network file drive, I've got my own SharePoint. I'm pretty lucky with CareWatch, so you can all these different drives to play with. I've also got my personal content um, folder as well through CareWatch. So first up, I just wanted to show you a little bit about um, what we can edit. So I'm going to jump into my personal content folder. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of the annotation and editing as well. I've got, let's go with the presentation that I'm doing now. So it's decrypting, everything's encrypted in here. You can see the presentation, I can bring it up, make it bigger if I want to. Um, I can go into like a demo mode as well. So if I was, uh, if I wanted to, and it was a nice little Apple TV, or, uh, or I had a connected here, I could actually demo everything from my iPad as well. Um, if I go in here and I want to go ahead and edit it, I just click up on the top right hand side. It's a little pen and paper. And it's going to go and open up the editing software. So in here, I can shuffle things around. So you know, moving my uh, moving my little text box, I can double click on the text box and go ahead. I can change the text in that. So uh, if I I need to bring it up a little bit, the keyboard's going to be brief. So I can go ahead, I can delete text, and I can go, if I wanted to, type an enterprise. Lower the keyboard again. I can bring that text box down if I wanted to. I can spin around if I wanted to as well, change the size. This PowerPoint presentation is going to be a little brief though, so I'm going to move out of that one. I'll put it back and forward as well. I might go into the Word document. It might be a little easier for me to sign around if this is going to be paint today. Let's go back and let's go for a turn on two. I'm going to go into my word file. So I think it's a new configuration guide. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit that. I can go ahead and delete the text if I want to. I can, if I wanted to, um, let's just bring up the options here. I can find and replace words in the document. I can uh, I can go have a look at the page layout. I can leave comments um, if I wanted to. I can go in here. I might be able to if I'm lucky enough. Let's go SEL. I think it's a little chubby. Go for SEL, and I'm going to go down here. I might change the font size here to let's say 44. Change the color to black. You can see all those activities that are happening in the background. So I've got a color picker if I want. I can you know, add different effects to the text, choose the font styles as well. So you have that level of control there. Um, you know, I've got a back arrow and a forward arrow at the very top if I need to undo those changes I've made. Perhaps someone from the design department is going to be tapped on the back and said that's absolutely disgusting. Um, it doesn't need without <laughs> industry colors or you know, uh, enterprise standard. Um, I can, I'm going to jump out of the Word document itself. I'm going to go and show you a couple of the document formats as well. So I'm going to show you, and I'm just going to close that tab as well. So this tab support, if you've got people that are, you know, perhaps working on two different documents and using material in between, they can have these documents open at the same time. I'm going to go ahead here and edit this. This is our pre-install uh, requirement worksheet. So if you were to go with, um, you know, Cloud Connector as such. It's really not liking me today. It's probably like in the middle of nowhere. Here we go. 
So I can go in here, um, I have the ability to you know, format different cells. Um, I've got different scientific you know, calculations that I can do. I can do number calculations, I can choose negative numbers, um, you know, I can do currency formatting on that. I can choose cell alignments, you know, wrapping text and such. Um, going full screen as well, so I have the ability to go full screen mode for presentations. Um, recalculations, sorting, you know, filtering the data, all that sort of stuff you can do for your products. You're able to insert new cells, insert rows, insert charts, images, camera, you know, um, photos from your camera. That's quite fantastic. In terms of the PDFs as well, I can go into the PDF and I can uh, go back into edit mode here and I might, might go in and I'm going to grab the pen and I'm just going to write my name here so I can leave that note over there. I can leave stickers on it, I can import photos from my photo library, which I don't think I have any at the moment. Let's just take a random photo, get rid of that cover. So take that photo there, I'm going to use it. I'll choose the quality. I can stick it in there, I can scale it around if I want to. So make it a little bigger. I can change it and pretty up the document. So that's, that's in terms of the editing capability that we do have. Um, you can favor documents as well, so if you've got certain documents that you really want to be brought to your attention when you log in, um, you can favorite them up in the, uh, in the top corner. That means that when I go into favorite content, I can now see that guide is there. I'm going to close that guide. I'll close the pre-install checklist. I'm going to go into all contents, and I have a couple of different documents here. So. Um, in terms of the restricted access document, I was talking about different documents that have different copies on them. You know, not being able to print. Um, watermarking is a new feature as well, actually, which is on this document. Um, you know, not being able to copy the text or anything like that, or, or edit the document, or bring that content out anywhere. I can do that. Um, blocking screenshots. I can even see that I can really just see the confirm of that document on the right-hand side. So there's not too much that I can really do with this particular document, other than if you and have that watermark if someone wants to take a photo, or you know, we had that ability opened up where someone can save that document externally, it's still watermarked so we know where it's come from. And I'm going to go into the document that's a little looser, so maybe one of my personal content ones, which might not have all the, the different uh, rules set up for it. You can see when I go to the right hand side again, I can actually open it to, I can print. Um, and you know, when I go and open it, I'm able to pull that out into Word, which I've put the in here. So one of the iOS 7 features was open into certain applications, being able to um, be read by certain applications again. So, um, so it's open into out of, open out of. So if I go into Word, I can purely talk to Word. I can't bring that into the other documenting suites because they weren't deployed by our NPM. Um, I can then bring that back into SDL again. So think of those situations where you might want external document editors to be able to bring stuff in. Um, you can do that, but if you really need to restrict it down and only allow access to like one editor, uh, you can do that as well. So I think because I downloaded, uh, this is a, well, let's just double check it. So this is a PDF document that I've downloaded. You did notice that I did have the Adobe Reader. I asked to install that myself. I didn't grab it from the App Store. Uh, I grabbed it from the App Store rather than grabbing it through MDM or the App Catalog, or pushing it onto as an administrator. So if I go open it on that PDF, there's actually no MDM managed um, PDF solutions on this device. So that's a security feature that we have it again. So that way, if the users go ahead and download their own editors and whatnot, or their own viewers, um, you can restrict the content to the series of apps that you've uh, pushed out. You know, part of your enterprise. In terms of, um, I guess, segregating itself from the rest of the device, I can actually take photos. Um, I'm going to do one now, I'm just going to give the subject name. I'll call it the photo. Uh, I won't give it a description, I'm just going to make it a high res photo. I'm going to go ahead and load the keyboard there. I'm going to put in my personal contents. I'll just save in this uh, specific spot. I'll go continue and add. I'll use my camera. So I'm just going to take a photo of the stand over there and get my finger out of the way. 
There we go. So I've got that photo there, and I'm going to go done. I'm going to import that into my personal content folder, and you can see that that's sinking back into the cloud. I can type that again. I can view it within SDL. But if I go back to the photo application on the device itself, you can see that there's no photos or videos stored in there. So we've kind of created that separation and protection um, of your corporate um, documents and photos and whatever you, you use, it, it doesn't necessarily flow out back to the other applications on the device, such as the camera. So a lot of, a lot of solutions will, um, when you take a photo, you can do it from the app like Instagram, but it's still going to appear in your photo library, so you don't have that layer of protection. Um, there's sorts, there's searches as well. Um, I'm going to go back into, let's just have a look. Actually, I might show you the cloud scene. So I'm going to bring up a web browser. How long do I have? I don't have. Oh, nice. Sorry, guys. I always talk a little too much. So I'm just going to pull this over on my iPad. Um, so this is our, this is our um, self service portal. So it's up to the customer whether they enable it or not. But we can type in our, our customer's name. So, you know, it could be uh, McDonald's. But in this case, in the CEO, I'm going to, our customer name is executive. I'm going to type in my Active Directory credentials. And this is going to talk back to our data that we have internally to, uh, to verify that I am who I say I am and I shouldn't need the Apple accesses. So this helps the full, I'm able to uh, administrate my own device. So think of, uh, think of users being able to reset their, their passcode if they've forgotten how to clear that out. If they have their active directory credentials and have this enabled, they can, um, you know, they can clear those things out and stop the IT uh, overhead costs of users ringing in that have forgotten their passcode. Just wait for that to load. They can also see all the devices that are registered for MDM. Um, if you enable them, they can see like tracking data, so they can see the GPS coordinates of their device. If you have that enabled, we have privacy options, which are really flexible. So you can choose what data you want to record, which what data you might want to just uh, skip over to, you know, um, depending on your IT policies and your corporate policies. So you can see I've got two devices. I've got my Apple um, XX laptop. It doesn't have a version of it because I'm running this a little early, like playing with things before they come out. And I've got my iPad, which I've resisted the presentation of upgrades to 8. Uh, you can see all the functionality just on the, uh, the right hand side here of what you can do. So I can see the app store as well. You know, I can see profiles that I was looking down. You know, like um, I might have exchange settings to share with my device as an end user. I can re push my exchange profile if it goes wrong. I don't want to talk to IT admin uh -huh. uh, at that point. Uh, flexibility there. You know, if, uh, if I'm not allowed to be editing content that's corporate, I can check my compliance. So I can make sure. You know, what have I done to my device so I can't get anything on it? I can go into the self service portal and check it out as well. Um, for now, I'm going to go to Magic Content. And you can see from the personal content folder that I've got um, the photo. So that's the photo that I just put there. That's where it's taken into the cloud. And if I'm right in saying so, I believe I have a personal scene set up on this laptop as well. So if I just go to my personal content folder and I'll cross you guys.
taste for what's coming in the future months. So, as I said before, this is Horizon. What you can see here is you've got your standard desktop apps, you've got your know, Office 365, WebEx, you've got PowerPoint here, you've got self service portal, which we were just in. Um, I've got secure concept locker here as well, you know, um, within this view. I've got your watch browser, your watch TV, I've got all the access, um, I've got access in here, um, Microsoft Paints, etc. So, I can click each of these links and so bring up the application itself. So this is kind of like what we're what we're seeking, uh, what we're aiming for in the next uh, you know, couple of releases. Um, I'll be able to show you what we're doing right now. Um, I know I'm right on the dot for time, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them right now. But I mean, if we if you want to break and you still have questions, or if you have anything, I'll be around. So, um, and if this break, the beer is later, I'm here to talk to you. Do you have any questions in the room before we break up? Yeah. Is this price per device? I don't do the license. I... <laughs> yep, one of the technical guys. Um, this it depends on the deal that you get. So there's different, there's different licensing options and such. Um, you know, you might license just SCL because all you really need is document protection, or you might go for full suite. Um, on those sorts of topics, send me an email, and I can actually get you in touch with one of our account executives that can give you price and you know what's, what's going to cost for what is going to suit your organization. Yeah. Any other questions or you guys want to break? Yep. Yeah. Um, I was talking to someone uh, about mobile device management solutions. Yeah. And apparently it's arrived in the uh, US for these guys to use the business protecting themselves from the user. But in Europe, it's the user protecting themselves from the business. Yeah. So what's the kind of environment like in Australia? Which one would you prefer? Um. In Australia, it's a little different. Um, I'll go for New Zealand as well, because a lot of my sales, I'm actually giving myself, I don't know if you guys picked up the accent. Um, the driver in New Zealand is mostly around enabling the users. So even the government departments, they want to be able to have the users, you know, whilst protecting themselves, still have access to all that backend material. In Australia, you've got a heavy mix. So you've got those people that have that US point, which is like the organization needs to protect themselves. That's what happened in my previous role when I was in government was, well, we really need to protect ourselves from all of this. Um, you know, coming in from other businesses that we've dealt with, it's, it's more about, you know, employee enablement, protecting the employee whilst meeting certain business requirements that they have. Um, it's, a really, it's a really interesting grounds. So our product has to be extremely flexible. We have a privacy section of the products that goes through, you know, like um, very granularly like what you want to enable, what you don't want to enable. You know, in Australia, like GPS tracking is an absolute no. Whereas in the US, you know, like, well, we need GPS tracking because we need to know that our employees are, are on site during the day and they're not home lounging around and such. Um, you know, you, you also got like, you know, privacy and being able to bring your own devices as well. So, you know, you, you have different rules for different groups of users. Um, so we can, we, can, we can completely customize all that sort of stuff. You know, BYD uses um, devices fully open for you to say, um, but we're not going to capture any information on the, on the AirWatch package, so you can configure it for that. But it may be our corporate, uh, you know, the corporate devices that we've brought in, and we're giving our employees to really need to lock this down. So we can do that. I can show you through some of those options if you're interested. Any other questions? Yeah? Uh, who governs the flexibility? It's up to your IT administrators. So, um, you know, whether you go on premise or, or cloud, it's fully up to the administrator and how they want to, um, I guess, configure this. So, um, so your IT admins will put in different policies for different AD groups, for different, you know, location groups that you might have crafted in the watch, um, different types of users that you create, so, you know, BYD or, or, you know, shared devices even. So we have hospitals um, where, you know, you might have medicine in there and they'll, they'll log into the device and they'll see all the stuff that's relevant with them and they've got highly restricted device. But they can actually log out of their watch, that device is still managed and, and tracked in the meantime, and then the doctor can log in and he gets entirely different content and he's able to do entirely different things and the device is more open for him. So it's, it's actually quite cool. Yeah. So yeah, anything else?